Praise the Lord, everyone. Uh, it's a blessing, it's a joy to be sharing with us this evening the Word of God. Um, once again, Lukwago Michael is my name. I'm married to Romina Lukwago, uh, who must be logged on as well. Uh, she's somewhere else, but she's logged on. Uh, that's my wife, always there to support and pray with me and pray for me. We have three daughters, and uh, the eldest is 15, turning 16. And then the next one is 14. And the last one is eight, just turned nine this month. So we praise the Lord for this opportunity. And even as I share with us, uh, the topic is overcoming spiritual doors. Uh, if you've been consistent on this platform, you know that the theme that we're covering this month is overcoming by prayer and fasting. And we are going through the 40-day fast. Uh, so the topic today is overcoming spiritual prison. Uh, spiritual prison doors coming from Acts chapter 12, uh, verse 1 to 12. Um, so let us pray before we begin. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for allowing us to come into your presence. We thank you for the opportunity to listen, but also to learn and study from your word. We ask that you speak to us. Lord, speak to me and speak through me, even as I share this word with your, your people. We pray that your Holy Spirit will grant us understanding, understanding that is divine, that comes from the throne room of heaven. And we pray that above all things, your name shall be exalted and glorified even as we share. We ask that you take charge over this network. We pray against any interruptions. And we pray that your presence and your Holy Spirit will be fully in charge of the airwaves. We honor you, Lord. We praise you and we glorify your name. For it's in Jesus' mighty name uh, that we've prayed. Amen and amen. Welcome once again, uh, those that have just joined us. Welcome, welcome. Um, our topic again is overcoming spiritual prison doors. Um, and uh, we're just going to read through Acts very quickly uh, for us to get the, um, the story behind this. And most of you know this story uh, about Peter when he was arrested and James. So Acts chapter 12, uh, starting from verse one to 12. About that time, King Herod Agrippa began to persecute some believers in the church. He had the apostle James, uh, that's John's brother, killed with a sword. When Herod saw how much this pleased the Jewish people, he also arrested Peter. And this took place during the Passover celebration. Then he imprisoned him, placing him under the guard of four scores of four soldiers each. This was a serious prisoner. Herod intended to bring Peter out of public, out for public trial after the Passover. But while Peter was in prison, the church prayed very earnestly for him. And this is the season we are in right now. We are in a time of prayer and fasting. Verse 6 it says that the night before Peter was to be placed on trial, he was asleep, fastened with two chains, not one, but two chains between two soldiers. Others stood guard at the prison gate. Suddenly, suddenly, there was a, a bright light in the cell and an angel of the Lord stood before Peter. The angel struck him on the side to awaken him and said, quick, get up. And the chains fell off his wrists. Then the angel told him, get dressed and put on your sandals. And he did. Now put on your coat and follow me, the angel ordered. So Peter left the cell following the angel. But all the time he thought it was a vision. He didn't realize 
it was actually happening. They passed the first and the second guard posts and came to the iron gate leading to the city. And this opened for them all by itself. So they passed through and started walking down the street. And then the angel suddenly left. Peter finally came to his senses, finally came to his senses. It is really true. He said, the Lord has sent his angel and saved me from Herod and from what the Jewish leaders had planned to do to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. It's amazing when you read that passage. Uh, what Peter was going through is what many of us would uh, ordinarily go through. He, he couldn't believe. He actually thought it was a vision. He, he thought he was probably dreaming or was in a vision. Until the very end, the word says that finally, finally, he got to his senses. Finally, he understood that it was real. Friends, this topic, overcoming spiritual prison doors, is one that is very sensitive and actually very important for all of us. And the reason is this. Many, many of us are going through it knowingly or unknowingly. We are in spiritual prisons. We are locked up in spiritual prisons. And so this evening, we want to understand what these spiritual, uh, spiritual prisons are and how these doors can be overcome, where we have been locked in. You know, for a prisoner in a physical prison, it is, you know, it requires a lot of effort to help them understand that although they are locked in that physical prison, they need to concentrate on freeing themselves spiritually. They, they may not understand that concept if you bring it up. They may not understand it at all. When they're in a physical prison cell, they don't understand that concept of a spiritual prison. But yes, friends, spiritual prisons are real, very real, and it is not just for those in physical prisons, but many of us, unfortunately, unfortunately, many of us are walking around smiling, looking good, suited up, uh, you know, driving wonderful cars, very, you know, um, handsome and beautiful. But guess what? We are in spiritual prisons. These prisons are real. We are trapped. And what is trapped? What is it that is trapped in this spiritual prison? Our soul, our mind, our thoughts. Unfortunately, God has not given us an opportunity for us to be able to see in people's minds. But if we could, you would be amazed. You would be amazed at your neighbor, at your, at your friend, the things that are locked in those minds, you know? A spiritual prison will hold you captive to a point where you can't even think anymore or at least think on your own. So you are under almost like a spell. You are being controlled. Even your decisions are being controlled, you know? So do you feel trapped? Do you feel like you are captive to a habit or a behavior, an emotion or an addiction? Guess what? You are in a spiritual prison. You are in a spiritual prison and you need to uh, understand it. The earlier you understand it, you accept it and be able to work yourself out, the better for you. And I pray that this evening, even before we end, you'll be able to get to that point because we are all in this spiritual prison. Many of us, at least, many of us are in a spiritual prison, not knowing. Many of us may know, but many may not know we are in a spiritual prison. Perhaps you go through every day, you know, you do your tasks, you do everything, you are, you are okay, everyone sees you, you're fine. But inside, inside you, there is a screaming 
for freedom. There is a screaming. You want to come out. You want to get out. There is that screaming. Because you are in a spiritual prison. You are in a spiritual prison. And you need, you know, the Lord to help you overcome and, and get out of that spiritual prison. We see in the scripture we read, Peter was put into prison. When he was put into prison, it was not just a cell. The scripture says that he, he had two chains between two soldiers. That was the first layer. Then it says that the king had four squads of four soldiers each, meaning there were four layers. Eh? For, for you to get to him, you had to overcome four squads of soldiers. Each one made up of four, 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 before you get even to the gate, which was also locked. And many of us have that kind of layer of spiritual prison. So deep, some of them are childhood issues that you buried and you don't want even to, 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 to unlock them. And guess what? They're even affecting your life today as an adult because you are in a spiritual prison. You have, you have been locked in that spiritual prison. But the good news is the Lord will set you free. Hallelujah. The Lord will set you free from that spiritual prison. Spiritual captivity drains our strength. It drains you. It steals your ability to look at that bigger picture. Remember, we said you can be at a point where you cannot even make your own decision. So it will steal your strength. It will steal your ability to look you know, to the future. Many people give up. Many do not even, um, they actually begin considering suicide uh, thoughts because they feel they have been locked in. They have been pushed to the corner. The devil has kind of pushed them to the corner. And they're in that spiritual prison spiritual captivity. Just like in a physical prison, you are in that cell. A person is in, a, you find that a person is in a cell. They, the only thing they can access is probably, you know, the things that they will bring for them and other prisoners, but they are in there. They cannot do anything on their own. So spiritual prison doesn't decide or doesn't allow you to make decisions on your own, never. Once you're in a spiritual prison, you are now under control of another power. And that's the enemy's power. The, the circumstances around you are the ones that will dictate your actions, basically. What hours do you sleep? When do you sleep? When do you eat? When do you do this? You know? Do you know that in town, we even have people that are, employed in very powerful places, wonderful offices, but they're in spiritual prisons to the extent that at every given time, there is a set time where they have to go back to the village and be able to appease certain gods that have sustained them to be in that place. That's a spiritual prison. You are held captive, that you cannot do anything. If you don't go back, things begin to backfire. Many of them, even they can't even sleep in their own houses. When they go in the village, they're sleeping in those small huts because they have to appease those gods. Circumstances are dictating their action. There are so many things that we, we can talk about spiritual prisons. Do you know that a spiritual prison limits you? It will limit you in every aspect. A spiritual prison will kill your, that power. It has that killing power, caging power to hold you in and to cave, carve you in so that you do not uh, move in any way. It's a place of bondage. It's a place of bondage. Oppressive power is the one that is reigning when you are in a spiritual prison. There's that oppressive power. You know, physical prisons are created by man. But guess what? Spiritual prison 
they are created by the devil. These are not visible. Forget about the physical ones that are visible. Where Peter was taken in the cell and put in the cell, it was a physical prison, you know, but the angel was able to break through. The angel was able to come through that physical prison. So even this spiritual prison, you need the power of God. The angel of God is the only one that can set you free from that spiritual prison. It's invisible. You cannot see it. It's not the, the, the physical one that you can see. So these spiritual prisons are satanic prisons. This Satan imprisons you. And this, friends, is real. You are going through it. One of you, one of us, knowingly or unknowingly, you are going through this. And guess what? It even happened in the Bible. Remember that story of Daniel when the angel of God was bringing his answer, Daniel's answer, and he was held up in the spiritual heavens. He was held up for 21 day, days. He was, he was imprisoned. He could not move. This is the angel of God. So you and I cannot survive this. It's there, it's real, but we know that we serve a God that is more powerful than this satanic prison, spiritual prisons. There are, there are certain things that will be indicators for you when you are in a spiritual prison. It will be obvious. You will not even, uh, you know, begin to doubt. There are indicators in daily life that we all go through. And sometimes, like I said, because we are unaware, we do not know. Do you know delay in childbearing is a spiritual prison? Do you know that marital delay can also be a, a spiritual prison? It is a spiritual prison and the Lord can get you out of it if you allow him, if only you allow him. And guess what? Even that job of yours, eh, that profitable employment that you have could be an, an imprisonment for you because you are always fully dedicated. You're idolizing it. It has taken over everything. You, you, you think I have a profitable employment? I have a good job? Guess what? It can become a prison for you. Your breakthrough. You've been praying for a breakthrough. It could also become a prison for you, a spiritual prison, where you now forget about what God has done and you are locked into this, um, whatever you've been praying for. If it's a marriage and you are totally, you know, uh, sold out and forgotten about the God that brought this breakthrough for you. Promotion, you know, results. We just received results for P7, you know. Some people may be in the excitement and totally forget about the time when they cried out to God to help them. You're thinking, you know, it's done. And before you know it, you're in a prison because you don't look back to go back to God, to thank God for, for what he has done. Your contract, you know, healing. Most of these things are the things that we do on a daily basis. You get an admission to a university and everything ceases. You get to the university, you never even step to the uh, fellowship. You, you, you start behaving in a way that is totally against the ways of, of God. You are totally a different person. You have been put in a prison. Like Peter was arrested and put in that cell. You have been put in a cell, spiritual prison that you are unable to uh, overcome on your own. Amen. Many prisons that we go through, your helpers, fees, money, rich, riches, all these things, travel opportunities, prayers, answers to the prayers, all these can be spiritual prisons if not well checked, if not well handled.
they can become prison, uh, prisons for you. So beware when you are in a situation where the answer to your prayer has now taken over the place of God in your heart. Beware. You could easily be in a spiritual prison. John 20, verse 19 to 29, you can read that. We see that Jesus' disciples were locked in a self-imposed prison after experiencing that trauma of their master. When their master was unjustly arrested, brutally beaten, then crucified. It's like life was no more for them. They went into a self-imposed prison. Today we celebrate things like Good Friday, which were some of the, 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 the these are the days that you know indicate to us the time when Jesus was crucified. But for the disciples, it seemed like the end of the world for them. They were in darkness. There seemed to be nothing good about the cross of the Calvary when it was happening. At that moment, these disciples were understandably devastated as, as they came together, as they you know, gathered behind those doors because there was fear that now, if Jesus, who has been our leader, has been crucified, now the Jewish people have access to us. They are going to, you know, come for us. And so they were in this prison. And this prison is a prison that many of us go through. The prison of fear. Fear can be a prison. It's a big, big issue that many of us go through. It's a spiritual prison. The disciples went through it. They were so afraid. They knew now that their master has been crucified. They are next. And if you remember, these guys denied him. They denied him because they were afraid. They were not sure what happens. Fear. And when you read that uh, scripture, John 20, 19, 23, you will see that in many um, places, I think it, it was twice or so, so. Jesus told them, peace be with you. Peace be with you. And, and verse 20 says that they saw the Lord. Their fear and anguish was replaced with great joy. And that's what we need. That's what we need. When we are in a place of fear, the person that we need, the thing that we need to set us free is to see the Lord. That assurance of the Lord being in your heart and you are filled with great joy. If you're feeling stuck in some area of your life today, friends, it is likely, it is likely that fear is one of the things that is holding you back. It is likely. But guess what? Just like he did for the disciples, Jesus wants to penetrate those closed doors and replace your fear with faith and that anxiety with peace and joy. Jesus wants to penetrate. Allow him to come in and penetrate and replace those closed doors, those spiritual doors. Eh? Let him replace them with faith, with peace, with joy. Amen. That is something that we all go through. Lack of purpose. You know, although these disciples had taken bold steps to leave their careers, leave their families, and, 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 you know, and go fully to walk with the Lord and serve. Now, a time has come, and they are left without purpose or without a vision, because the head has been taken. And many of us, friends, we go through this. Where you are in a place where there is lack of purpose. You have, you feel like, I don't, there's no reason for my existence. There's no purpose for my being here. 
guess what the, 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 the disciples did? They had abandoned and denied the savior in that hour of need. And now they are traumatized. They're in this traumatized condition, which now seems to disqualify them from any significant usefulness as if they, they are of no purpose. They deny the savior. Now a time has come. They are in this traumatized moment. They have no sense of purpose. But God, God is never, he will never forget us. He always gives us a second chance. He always accepts us. Jesus recommissioned and affirmed them with fresh vision and fresh purpose. Fresh vision and fresh purpose. Verse 21, if you read it, as the Father has sent me, I also send you. John 20, verse 21. He recommissioned them. He didn't give up on them. He didn't forget them. So if you're in that place where there's lack of purpose, there's one person who can re recommission you, one person who can give you a new, a fresh vision and purpose, the Father. The Father can do that. What an encouraging story for us today. To know that there's that father who can recommission us. Even when you're falling to the bottom of the pit. Even when you feel like your failures unusable by God. He can reaffirm your calling and give you a new commission to impact the world. Absolutely. You change every situation of the world. The Lord can do it for you and I. But the other thing that stands out is the issue of weakness. Weakness comes in, especially when you are in that place of, of spiritual imprisonment. You see that the disciples, on top of that lack of purpose, they were suffering from lack of power. They, don't, they didn't have any power anymore because look, they were looking at Jesus. Jesus was the one that, you know, was giving them that, you know, purpose to move on, but also the power. And even if they had got a new commission, if they hadn't got power, this new commission would have fallen on deaf ears. But they had to get empowerment. And, and, and you see, God, <laughs> Jesus is, is amazing. He recognizes this. And after recognizing their need, he breathed into them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. And that's verse 22. He, took, he breathed in them. He said, these guys need a, a, a new empowerment. Apart from the recommissioning, I need to empower, empower them afresh. I need them to know that they still have the power. Receive the Holy Spirit. And that's what the Lord is saying to you today. Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit that will empower you to come out of that pit where you feel you have been totally locked out. That spiritual prison where you are. You need to receive the Holy Spirit. In their own strength, the disciples they would not have managed. They would not have been able to fulfill the plan, the grand plan for their lives. No. And guess what? No can I, no can you, without the power that comes from the Holy Spirit. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, we can transform the world. That is a given. Acts, 8, uh, Acts 1, chapter, verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 8, and Philippians uh, 4, verse 3. If you go there and read it, it confirms this, that empowered by the Spirit, we can transform the world. All we need is the spirit of God and we transform the world. The spirit of God. There is something that many of us, even on this call, are going through that is a big spiritual prison. And that is lack of forgiveness. Forgiveness issues. You hold someone and say, this one, uh-uh, I cannot forgive. For what they have done, I will never forgive. 
But Jesus is saying to us, you need to let go. When you read that scripture in John, Jesus showed them his wounds. And this was proof that they had been forgiven by the blood that he had shed. They had been forgiven for denying him. They had been forgiven for walking away at that hour of need. Yet that's not all he did. He also told them about their calling to extend his forgiveness to others. And that's what God is telling us. This is a big spiritual prison that we're going through, many of us. There are some kinds of spiritual prisons today. And if you're going through these prisons, there is a good chance that forgiveness could be the key that will unlock. You need to forgive that person. You're going through a spiritual prison. Things are not working out. Things have been locked. Things, are, things have been, you know, uh, going downhill. But guess what? The key might just be that forgiveness. That forgiveness. Forgive that one person and you'll see how it will set you free. Perhaps you need to receive God's full forgiveness of your past. You look at your past and you failed to forgive yourself. Release yourself from that guilt, that shame, that condemnation. Allow the Lord to work on you. You need to forgive yourself because there are things that you think, I did this, this one God cannot forgive, but the Lord can forgive you. The key is in your hands. Forgive and he shall release you from that spiritual prison. Or maybe you are still stuck in emotional bondage because you have not yet forgiven someone who hurt you. Either way, forgiveness is an indispensable key for your freedom. You cannot put it aside. You need to forgive to get your release, to be released from that prison, prison, prison uh, that you are, you are locked in, for those doors to be unlocked, for you to overcome the prison that you're in, that spiritual prison, forgive. The sooner you acknowledge that you have a problem, the sooner you are freed. The sooner you acknowledge, the sooner you will be set free. Your freedom will come when you realize you need to set, uh, forgive others. In order for us to help us, you know, come out of this captivity, let us read through Second uh, Corinthians uh, chapter three, verse seventeen, and it says, "Now the Lord is the Spirit." And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Hallelujah. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom. You are set free by the spirit of God. The spirit of the Lord is the one that will set you free. The spirit of the Lord cannot reside where the spirit of captivity is. They cannot be in the same place. So as long as you have the spirit of God, the spirit of the Lord, that spirit of captivity will flee, will lose you. And that's the key for overcoming that spiritual closed door, that spiritual prison that you're in, the spirit of God. Remember I say that Jesus breathed the spirit, the Holy Spirit on his disciples. He's breathing his spirit upon you this evening that you may be set free. Liberty will come from that. Liberty will come from the spirit of God breathed upon you. The key that will set you free is to tighten up your relationship with God. Seek to have the, his Holy Spirit inside of you. Seek to know him, seek to serve him, seek to understand the spirit of God. And then your freedom happens. Friends, 
your, 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 your spiritual prison can only be loosed or can be, you can be released from it when the spirit of God is in you. I cannot see, say this any better. You need the spirit of God. Hallelujah. What are we saying? The key that opens the gates of spiritual prisons is the spirit of God. For you to overcome, you need the spirit of God. You will, all, you will only remain inside if you choose to. But if you have the spirit of God, you will be able to come out of that prison. So, seek the spirit of God. But secondly, earnest prayer and fasting. We read in the scripture that while Peter was in prison, the church was praying earnestly. We need to pray earnestly. Thank God we are in this time of prayer and fasting. Take advantage of this time and receive your release from this spiritual prison. Prayer and fasting is another thing that will allow you to overcome this. Prayer and fasting. I can't emphasize this anymore. You need prayer and fasting. Supernatural intervention, Acts chapter 12, verse 7. Same scripture we read. It says that suddenly there was a bright light in the cell. I like it when I read the word suddenly in the scripture because I know there is great intervention. God has intervened. intervened. There is things like suddenly there was a loud noise. Suddenly there was a bright light. Suddenly there was an earthquake. Those, those are things that for me excite me because I know God is about to do something. Suddenly there was a bright light in the cell. And guess what? The angel of the Lord stood before Peter and the angel struck him on the side to awaken him and said, quick, get up. And the chains fell off his wrist. He didn't even bother talking to the chain. He told Peter, get up. The chains responded, hallelujah. The chains that are holding you, that spiritual prison, the Lord will, doesn't have to even speak to them. As long as the presence arrives like this in you, the Holy Spirit of God, you're loosed immediately from that spiritual prison. Supernatural intervention. Surrender to Christ. Surrender your life. Surrender. Many of us want to take charge of our lives. We want to be in charge. We want to be in control. But the scripture says, unless you become like little children, little children, don't, they don't care about anything. They, what you tell them is what, is what they do. And that's what God wants us to do. Surrender. Be like a little child. But also trust in God. Trust in God. You need the Holy Spirit. You need honest prayer and fasting. You need supernatural intervention for these spiritual doors to be open and for you to overcome them. You need to surrender to Christ, but you need to trust in God. You need to know that the God you serve is more than able to get you through it. You need to know and to trust in him. Seek that angelic assistance. The archangel of God delivered Daniel's breakthrough. He, the archangel was healed, but eventually delivered. Your deliverance will come through the angelic assistance. Seek for angelic assistance. As you pray, start to cover yourself in the blood of Jesus. Ask the Lord to cover you in the blood of Jesus that you will be set free, be released from that spiritual prison in Jesus' name. You will be let loose your marriage will be released from that spiritual prison. You will be set free. You will not struggle. You will not be uh, uh, under, under, under the influence and control of the enemy, but you will be set free. Hallelujah. You will be set free because the presence of God is with you. 
like Peter, go to the final place and say, oh, finally, he came to his senses and says, this is real. You are going to come to that place and say, wow, it was not a vision, it is real. I have been set free. You begin to see things flowing, but you have a part to play. You need to pray earnestly. You need to seek for the Holy Spirit. You need to allow the Holy Spirit to work, work in you. We, you need to be able to accept the angelic assistance. You need to trust God. You need to say, God, I trust you. I believe that you can do it. You need to get to that point of surrender and say, you know what, God, I've tried everything, but everything has failed. The power of God and the blood of Jesus shall set you free from every spiritual prison of your life in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you. Father, we thank you because you are a God that is faithful. You are a God who knows us. Even as we struggle in these spiritual prisons, tonight, Lord, we are asking, set us free. Set us free from these prisons and forgiveness. Lord, where we have become inconsiderate, we have idolized the jobs, the things that you've given us, the answered prayers. Lord, we ask that you forgive us. Tonight, set us free. Release your Holy Spirit. Breathe your Holy Spirit like you did for the disciples upon us and set us free from these spiritual captivities. Step loose, open those doors like that gate that opened on its own into the city. I pray that for each one of us that is on this call and many that are not here, that they will receive from you. They will be able to receive that release, that freedom from you, oh God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Amen. Brother Michael Rukwago. Thank you for the word. Thank you for being used of God. Uh, let us pray, brethren. Father in heaven, we thank you for the feeding, the food that you have given us this evening through our brother, Michael. We thank you, Lord, for opening our minds to the issues of spiritual bondage, spiritual prisons, some of which some of us may be in prisons and yet we are unknowing. Lord, we thank you for Michael having obeyed your word and delivered this message to us. Lord, we ask that you bless him, bless his family, his wife, Robina, and the children. Bless whatever he puts his hand to do, Lord. Bless his going out and his coming in. Keep him, O oh Lord, and close him in a, a hedge of the spiritual fire, Lord, so that the evil one will not reach him. May you give him a, a expansion in, in his uh, place of work, in whatever he does. May you give him a good return for his effort in uh, spreading your word. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Um, our brother Michael told us that many of us are prisoners knowingly or unknowingly. Let us pray that the Holy Spirit will reveal to each one of us our state. Father in heaven, we may be in prisons that we are not aware of. We may have opened those prison doors ourselves and entered in, Lord, unknowingly. Father, Lord, Seek us out. Send the Holy Spirit to reveal to each one of us our state. Send the Holy Spirit to tell us, give us instructions what to do in order to escape these prisons, in order to break free. Lord, clear our souls, our minds, our thoughts of those things that have imprisoned us and closed our eyes, closed our minds to your design of our life, to your plan of our life, Lord. We have heard that spiritual captivity drains our strength. Lord, many of us may have lost strength to do 
whatever purpose you put us here for because we are imprisoned. We are unable to focus on our actual purpose because we are imprisoned. Lord, give us the uh, deliverance from these prisons. Give us uh, a, a, a mind that will recognize what has imprisoned us, Lord, and give us that intervention, a spiritual intervention that will release us. Father, in your name, in, in, in your word in Acts, we heard that Peter was told by the angel to get up and go. And he did. He obeyed. Perhaps if he hadn't, he would have stayed in prison. Some of us have heard the word, but not obeyed, Lord, and we have stayed in our prisons. Let us pray that we will hear the Holy Spirit. Father in heaven, much as we ask that you release us, that you send the Holy Spirit, our ears may not be perceiving what the Holy Spirit is saying. Our minds may not be seeing what the Holy Spirit is saying. Father, clear the clouds, clear the mist that has surrounded us so that we'll be able to hear clearly what the Holy Spirit is saying so that we will break loose out of this oppressive powers out of these oppressive uh, prisons. May the Lord help us. May you help us to recognize that it is your word, Holy Spirit, that is calling us, Lord. May we not be mixed up with other, other messages from our surroundings, from our jobs, from our social standing, from our families, from the company we keep, from our bodies or anything else, Lord. May we hear clearly your word that says get up and get out of this prison. And Lord, may we be obedient to allow you to deliver us out of the bondage that we are in, of the hardship that we are in, of the infringement of our freedom to, that is not allowing us to do that which you set us in this world to be. We heard also that the Lord will recommission us for purpose. If we have fallen and or failed, we are not, not everything is lost. And we are able to get back to the course only if we allow the Lord Jesus to do so. Father in heaven, we ask that you repair us, renew us, re-equip us, Lord, even when we have failed, even when we have fallen, even when we have lost time in these prisons, in these spiritual prisons, Lord. May you put us in a place where we can pick up speed, pick up gear, and continue with the work that you have set us here on earth to do. Lord, strengthen us when we are in the spiritual imprisonment. Re-empower us, as your word says, that if we receive the Holy Spirit, we will be free and we will be re-empowered. Father in heaven, we've heard that uh, the big one of the biggest spiritual prisons is unforgiveness. Lord, we prayed at the beginning of the prayer about this, but we will do that again because it has it appears to be the biggest thing that leads us into spiritual imprisonment. Father Lord, many of us are holding on to grudges, are holding on to people who have uh grieved us, are holding on to our employers, we are holding on to people of different uh, political parties, we are holding on to people of different tribes, we are holding on to people of different gender, we are holding on to our leaders in each and every place, Lord. We are holding on to people who work below us, Lord, because they have done that which has not pleased us. Heavenly Father, give us the grace to recognize that in holding people captive because they have grieved us, we are imprisoning ourselves. And there will be no freeing of ourselves unless we free others from that bondage that we've put them under. Lord, by your grace, break down this evil spirit of unforgiveness amongst us. Especially us, Lord, in the church, may we give an example to others that because we forgive, we will be forgiven, Lord. Father in heaven, have mercy on us and give us 
hearts of flesh, hearts that will feel for others, hearts that will listen to you, Lord, and obey and forgive others who have wronged us, Lord, so that we'll also be forgiven, including forgiving ourselves for past sins, Lord, that we have brought to you, that we have repented, but still kept holding them. Father, Lord, forgive us and have mercy on us. Give us the grace to experience forgiveness and extend forgiveness to others. May we receive God's forgiveness of our past because we have forgiven ourselves, Lord. Father in heaven, we ask that you give us a, a closer relationship with you so that we will understand the spirit that you sent to us, that we will be able to hear, that we will be aware of the spirit's voice when the spirit speaks, that we will be aware when the spirit moves that this is the spirit that is moving. Father, keep us in oneness, in unity, in prayer, Lord. As a church, as families, as individuals, Lord, we have heard that the strength of breaking out of prisons is earnest prayer. Father, Lord, keep us in prayer. Keep us in earnest prayer, not only in seasonal earnest prayer like we have been, in the prayer and fasting season, Lord. May this be a way of life, Lord, day in, day out. May we be people of prayer. May we be known as people of prayer. May we never lose this connection with you, Lord, that we have built in the time of prayer and fasting, but continue to be closer to you, to want to be nearer to you each and every hour of the day, so that, Lord, we will not reopen spiritual uh, bondages that we have broken out of. Father, finally, we ask that you break us, mold us anew, Lord. Help us to surrender our lives to, to you, to trust that you will take care of us, that you will take care of everything that is about us, about our children, our families, that is about our church, is about our, our work, it's about our lives in general. Help us to, to surrender, Lord, so that we will not reopen gaps where the devil will torment us. Father, Lord, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for the people who have been on this call. We ask, Lord, that you bless them and keep them and, and keep them alert and lit up in prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ, I have prayed. Amen.